Well, this week we're going to continue on our topic of uh, what stones <coughs> to polish together, what stones not to polish together. And uh, I want to come back to uh, the idea of a stone's hardness, because it's really, really important to understand this if you're going to have some success as a beginning tumbler. Uh, I've got a bunch of different stones here, some that are good for beginners, some that are definitely not good for beginners. And I'm going to show you a few of them and then show you one thing that they they have in common. So uh, here we have pyrite, which I've talked about before. This is what, now this is pyrite in matrix, and the matrix is just all the other stuff around here. But the shiny stuff is iron pyrite, uh, what we call sometimes fool's gold. And it's one of the prettiest stones uh, that you're going to find. Uh, it's It can be tumble polished. It doesn't really improve it. <laughs> it looks beautiful just the way it is. Uh, so generally speaking, I say don't don't tumble pyrite. Here we have amazonite. Uh, amazonite uh, is a very beautiful stone. It can be polished uh, and it can be tumbled. Uh, it is a little bit more challenging. Uh, here's one that beginners often want to start out with: uh, fluorite. I mean, it looks beautiful and when it's the colors it comes in rainbow colors at times just depending on what you find we can see some coloration here going from purple to kind of a bluish green and we've got some more of that bluish green here um, beautiful beautiful rock um, a lot of times beginners want to start with this and they get really frustrated because uh, fluorite does not tumble uh, well it can be tumbled but it's better off with a, uh, a vibratory tumbler and a little bit more complex polishing process. Sodalite, another one that's uh, beautiful, dark, dark blue with some uh, other uh, kind of white coloring in here, some veins, uh, not easy to tumble. Calcite this is another one that beginners like a lot. Um, this is what I call a, a melt-in-your-mouth stone. It looks like a piece of candy that you could pick up and just uh, pop in your mouth and and uh, really enjoy. Uh, don't try that. Uh, <laughs> but it feels waxy. It feels buttery almost. Um, and then if you put this in a tumbler, it's going to uh, very quickly wear away. You're not going to have anything uh, left. Another one that beginners like to start with, this is Labradorite, and, and the reason, and I don't know how well the video will pick this up, but uh, Labradorite tends to have some iridescence to it. Uh, now, this is a piece that I tumbled. I've been tumbling for five years now, and uh, this is, was in my last batch just a few weeks ago. This is the first piece of Labradorite that I have successfully tumbled in a uh, in just a rotary tumbler um, and I've tried many times but this is the first time it's really worked well so and I made some changes in my tumbling process to to bring that about so just to let you know well the, the one thing that all of these stones here I'm going to move these ones out of the way um, have in common and I'll put pyrite in there too uh, but it's it's different because it is uh, in kind of a it's it's harder, but uh, still, the rule that I'm going to give you pretty much follows. If the name of the stone ends in it, I-T-E, uh, it's probably going to be a challenging stone to polish. Doesn't mean it's impossible, but it doesn't. It, it's it's not a great beginner stone. And again, in my opinion, pyrite. Yes, you can, but it it's not going to look any better. So, uh, so if if the name of the stone has it in it. Um, sh you know, steer away from that for now. Uh, so let me get these out of the way. Another that beginners like is amber. This is amber, and it's fossilized tree sap. Uh, these are pieces I've polished, but you'll notice that these are kind of shaped, and that's because I hand polished these. Uh, amber, if you put it in a tumbler, is going to just melt away and you're not going to have anything because it is fossilized tree sap and it will uh, rehydrate and it will just wash away. So so if you find amber, don't, don't try to put it in a tumbler. You can hand polish and later on I'll talk about hand polishing. But uh, for now, 
Let's stick with ones that you can do. I mentioned last time uh, a petrified wood. Uh, petrified wood is really good beginner stone. It's hard, doesn't fracture. There's a bit of a fracture there, but it doesn't fracture and bruise quite as easily as most other kinds of, of rocks. Um, agates. This is a Lake Superior agate. And both of these are, I believe. And jaspers. And one that some people say is hard, but I've always had good success with, is tiger eye. Uh, and, and tiger eye, you get that nice, again, kind of an iridescent uh, look to it if you move. So, so those are ones that are easier to tumble with. Now, just before we finish, you might be wondering, well, how do I know what stones are soft and what stones are hard uh, when it comes to tumbling? There's another piece of uh, petrified wood. Uh, how can I tell the difference? Well, there's a, a scale that was developed quite some time ago called the Mohs scale, M-O-H-S, and uh, I'm putting it up on the screen now. So you can see this, and this is uh, from the National Park Service. Uh, I will put a link below, and you can go uh, uh, to that website and, uh, and look at this more carefully. But it shows you the, it's a 10-point scale with talc as the softest one, and diamond as the hardest, and then there are a number of different stones in between. Now, it's not listing every conceivable stone, just kind of giving you a representation. But uh, learning the most scale is really important if you want to get anywhere in tumbling and and not be frustrated. Uh, so you're going to want to learn what stones are hard, what stones are soft. You always want to tumble stones of similar hardness. Uh, so if something is a 7 on the Mohs scale, like, uh, like agate or jasper, you don't want to tumble that with something that's further down, like Amazonite or fluorite, uh, because these are going to get beaten to death by the harder stones. So you want to make sure that the stones you do tumble are, the, are, are very similar or close in hardness. Uh, how can you tell? Well, you have the chart. Uh, if you buy your stones, like I do, I, I live in North Texas, there's not a great deal of, of uh, rock hounding uh, resource around here. So I buy most of the rocks that I tumble. Uh, and uh, usually the sites online where you buy the rocks will tell you uh, the hardness of the rocks as you're buying them. And then the more you tumble, the more you'll learn and you'll know what rocks go together. So, uh, so that's today's focus, just kind of part two on uh, what kind of stones to tumble and how to know. And uh, if you'll notice that chart that I put up, you go to that website, it will show you also how to identify, like how to, if you find, just find a rock somewhere, how to see where it falls on the Mohs scale uh, based on a scratch test. And uh, depending on uh, what will scratch that stone, you can tell where it falls. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, hang in there. We're getting a little bit closer uh, to starting to look at uh, how to get started in tumbling. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'm Jim Pence with See the Light. We'll see you next week.